Hello and welcome to the Auto Car Show. Now this is a first for us, first time in China and first time at a motor show here. It's the Beijing Motor Show that we are at and there should be a lot that's interesting here, very relevant to the Indian market. Of course, the big one being the Ford EcoSport, the production ready version that we're all looking forward to. Well, I'm headed off inside. Let's see what more we find interesting. While we ponder on about how important India is becoming in the world's auto scenario, Beijing Motor Show stands testimony to the fact that China has already stamped its authority. All the top manufacturers were there, apart from the various Made in China brands that had us confused as to whether we were looking at originals or the rip-off lookalikes. The first launch of the day was a massive one from Ford. The most interesting to us at Ford, of course, was the EcoSport and we got a closer look. Well, it's the first look at the interior of the production-ready version of the EcoSport. Now, they say that this is really actually almost what will be out there on the roads. It's very much like the Fiesta up front, but the big difference is here in the back seat. You're sitting much higher, really feels like an SUV and I have to say that the legroom is pretty good over here. Nice headroom and you've got a load of space for luggage at the back. So every bit of the SUV that it's really meant to be. But take a look at the rest. Not only the inside, but the boot also looks reasonably large. The EcoSport will get 16-inch alloys as standard and a chrome-laced grille. It's expected that all models will feature keyless entry, remote start and fourth sync infotainment system with voice control. On the safety front, Ford has kitted it with dual front and curtain airbags, ABS, ESP, hill assist and rear parking sensors. Based on the Ford Fiesta's platform, we expect this one to come with great driving dynamics and with the 1.0-litre EcoBoost engine that is getting rave reviews worldwide, all Ford have to do is price this right to have another runaway success. Whilst the EcoBoost will be a good petrol offering, as of now the skew in India is still towards diesel. And we caught up with Joe Hendricks to find out more about that. We're planning for higher rates of diesel engine capacity for our new product programs, higher than we would even planned for a couple years ago because of what's going on in India. You know, 70 to 80 percent of the sales lately have been of diesel engines. So we're planning to have that kind of capacity in place when we launch EcoSport and other products in the future. You never know when it could move uh, to be a different again. So that's why we're so excited about what we're doing in India, which is having our engine plants that can build both petrol and diesel. Well, to help them get the pricing right, though Ford denied it on camera during the Delhi Motor Show, they have managed to squeeze and tuck the EcoSport. Is this going to be under that four meter mark? I assure you it is done for the Indian market and we actually have done several researches in India because India is a very important market for us. We can expect this to now be under the four meter and get the excise benefit that you know that we get in the Indian market. That was something that we were very uh, reconnaissant of and we made sure that it, it, it works. So it's a given that this one will get the excise benefits. Were there any other challenges and changes for India? The key things that, that are different uh, for India market, um, the tastes in fabrics are different in different countries. So obviously then we had to have fabrics for India and all those fabrics had to meet our global standards. Right? Uh, the durability circuit, uh, the Indian road conditions sometimes demand uh, better squeak and rattle performance than you would in Europe for example. So we paid a lot of attention to those parts uh, that would make the vehicle absolutely quiet and comfortable for the customer. Um, the composition of the gas is different in different countries. So for Indian um, uh, markets, we tested with Indian um, petrol and Indian uh, fuels. Now apart from the B segment, Ford are also quite excited about the C segment. That globally, the C segment is where the volume is largely in all the markets. It's the largest segment in the US, in China, in Europe. And we have fabulous new Focus, we have the new Kuga, we have, and we have a number of other products off that C platform. And I think the Indian market will continue to evolve and grow to get larger in scope and scale like the other markets in the world have. And so we think there is potential for the C segment in India. It's a matter of when, uh, not if. 
So you can expect the Kuga to cross over quite literally into the Indian market. On the same platform as the Ford Focus, it will be a size larger than the EcoSport, but it's still about two years away. Right across the hall from Ford was the brand new Santa Fe. The exterior gets an entirely new look and Hyundai are calling this design language Storm Edge. The front gets an interestingly shaped swept back headlamp and bold looking hexagonal grille with a large air dam area. The lines are less square and the roof line swoops over to the rear in an almost coupe like fashion making the Santa Fe look more car than SUV. From Hyundai to Nissan, what caught our eye there was the global unveil. Nissan globally revealed a car here at the Beijing Motor Show today called the Sylphie. Now, it's pretty interesting to us because this is the car that is the Corolla beater. It's in that same segment and we definitely think it's going to be headed India's way. Still about two years down the line, but let's get a closer look. The Nissan Sylphie looks like it will be quite a car opening up a lot of space in the back seat too. The interior looks pretty premium and the exterior has sweeping character lines with LED bordered headlamps and tail lamps. The Sylphie debuts with a new 1.8 litre engine carrying a lot of new technology that promises to make it fuel efficient and greener. Skoda's Mission L, well it has a name worldwide, it's called the Rapid but it certainly can't have that name in India because we already have a Skoda Rapid there, so it's going to have to search for a new identity in the Indian market. What's the positioning of this car? Well, there's going to be a big gap between the Rapid and the brand new Octavia when it hits the Indian market. And we think that the Mission L fits that gap perfectly, and that's exactly where it's going to be placed. The Mission L promises to be big on space and good on value. And the interior looked of great quality too. If all of this carries through to the Indian version, Skoda will have another hit on their hands. What was really making waves in the Volkswagen Hall was a mission of another kind, Lamborghini's foray into the SUV space. And Lamborghini's SUV, the Urus, finally gets unveiled, designed in Lamborghini's typical edgy and shock factor kind of styling. The Urus definitely stands out. It's touted to be the sportiest SUV ever. And we think the Lamborghini Aventador 700 BHP engine is what will be under the hood. Now, if you're wondering what Urus is, well, it's an extinct European and West Asian wild ox that this car has been named after. Does it have any similarities? Well, I think much more than that. With this being concept, the interior was being closely guarded. But it revealed a skeletal frame-like look, promising a lot of lightweight technology. The exterior is unmistakably Lamborghini, with a supercar-like bonnet, a gaping grille and the Aventador-like air dam creating quite a presence. The Urus will be built on the Volkswagen and Audi's big car platform, the MLB. The massive SUV is a full 114mm longer than even a BMW X6, but it's 24mm lower. It will use a lot of the chassis parts from the next Audi Q7 and Porsche Cayenne. It will also get a lot of new technologies, one of them being drive mode that will allow the driver to adjust the firmness of the springs and dampers to his liking. Well, when you see it from the outside, you can say it's imposing to say the least. Across the hall, Audi was also offering something interesting. Well, we haven't got enough of the Q3 just yet in India and now we get to see this RS Q3 in this matte blue. It is just gorgeous to look at. The interiors match it as well with the blue stitching on the leather seats. Well, this is the RS version, the first time that Audi are actually doing an RS version of an SUV. And this is going to come with a highly tuned version of the 2.5 litre TFSI engine. As you can see with me standing near it, it's considerably lowered down about 25 mm. And of course, it gets the RS kitting. Externally, the Q3 RS is distinguished by its muscular RS styling kit. At the front, there's a new 3D effect black honeycomb grille, tinted headlights, a redesigned front bumper with sculpted air intakes, and a spoiler made from carbon fiber reinforced plastics. The flared side skirts and the wheel arches give the RS a wider stance, whilst a long rear spoiler gives it a purposeful profile. 
the rear there's a new bumper with the diffuser insert and two large tailpipes. The concept is finished in the striking Oros blue paintwork. There's also the carbon fibre along the wheel arches and floorboard. The blue and black themed interior has also undergone a makeover compared to the standard Q3s. Black Napa leather seats get the contrasting blue Alicantra stitching which looks really rich. Sporty and sexy, the Q3 RS will surely make it to production. From sporty to sleek, we hopped over to Mercedes to check out the CSC. Mercedes' new concept styles Coupe. Now this takes forward and evolves the design of the F800 concept and has a lot of the CLS in it. Well, it's about 47 millimeters longer than the current C-Class, but seeing that the C-Class is due for an upgrade and it's going to get larger, this one is still going to slot below it. Well, it's a sexy looking piece of machinery. I think I need to talk less, you need to look more. The Mercedes concept style Coupe was one of the most significant Beijing launches in global terms because it previews the German company's next small saloon, the CLA. It's due next year and is designed to offer the sort of style associated with the larger CLS model at a much reduced price. The CLA will share mechanicals with the latest A and B class, so it will be front-wheel drive and feature the same range of turbocharged petrol and turbo diesel engines. It looks great and if enough of the CSC's curves make it into production, this will be a stylish alternative for the Audi A4 and BMW 3 Series. The G63 is all set to replace the G55 AMG. Now this one comes with a 5.5 litre V8 bi-turbo engine that's going to produce 536 PHP. Of course, apart from that, in the technicals, you will get drive that's channeled to all four wheels. Three separate diffs that you can lock individually. So a lot in the technicals and a lot that you can do with this vehicle. But apart from all that, technology this is all about the feeling of an old school SUV that king of the road with the raw basics but yet spot of luxury the G65 AMG flaunts a new front bumper with larger cooling ducts and a double slat grille side mounted exhaust pipes exiting ahead of the rear wheels and the characteristic five spoke AMG alloy wheels well if you see some similarities you are absolutely right this is where the Premier Rear actually originates. Zotier is the company where Premier actually sourced the Rio from and got rights to make it in India. Well, let's see what more is here at the Zotier stall that Premier could actually bring in. Well, the larger SUV is what we hear the Premier is looking at. Now, a few may scoff at this brand, but Premier have graduated from rural to urban slowly and steadily, and with the refreshed version of the Rio, I'm beginning to see quite a few of them around. Next, we may see this larger offering from them. So BMW's long wheelbase version of the F30, the new series that's about to be launched in India. Now, long wheelbase versions are very popular in China, but I think equally important in the Indian market because it's such a backseat dominated segment. Now, you can see it's opened up a lot of room over here. This is 110 millimeters longer, so lots more leg room here, lots more additions as well, like lights and uh, mirrors for the rear passengers. A lot more luxury feel in here and I think this one will definitely make its way there as well. So it's not only stretched out but a lot of value addition for the rear seat passenger and I think we'll see it sooner than later on Indian roads. Apart from all the cars that there was, there was a special occasion too. The price distribution of the first ever Autocar Asian Car of the Year award. Horma Sarabji, our editor, presented the award for the top honour to the Audi A6. Peter Schwarzenbauer of the Audi board was there to receive the trophy. After that, it was finally time to call it a day. Well, it's been a great visit and a first time for us and pretty much quite a bit here that's relevant to the Indian market. Well, you got a first look at all of it. Luckily, this one is not as huge as those fairs that we go to in Europe. So I'm a little less tired than normal. I hope you've enjoyed watching. <laughs>